Hello and welcome to the channel. Peter Albee's request to interrogate the Independent National Electoral Commission High Neck ICT experts has been rejected by the five panel judges at the election tribunal. This will come as a huge setback for the Labour Party presidential candidate who had hoped to use the interrogation of the INEC officials to build his case for the as a six to turn Tinibu's election victory in his favor. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you. Presidential Election Court dismisses Peter Obi's request to interrogate INEC ICT experts. The Presidential Election Petition Court in Abuja on Saturday dismissed a request by the Labour Party's presidential candidate, Peter Obi, to interrogate ICT experts of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, over the conduct of the February presidential election. Mr. Obi had sought to interrogate INEC's ICT officials concerning Internet use during the 25th February presidential election. Mr. Obi and his party are in their joint petition, challenging the emergence of President Bola Tsinubu as the winner of the poll. He alleged manipulation of the electoral process by INEC in favor of Mr. Tsinubu of the Hull Progressives Congress, APC. But Mr. Obi's application to interrogate the electoral umpire's ICT experts was vehemently opposed by lawyers to INEC, Mr. Tsinubu and the APC at the court's hearing on 8 June. Ruling on the issue on Saturday, the five-member court panel headed by Arunat Samani said Mr. Obi's legal team failed to file their request to interrogate Hynex ICT officials within the statutory period enshrined in the Electoral Act 2022. In an election petition, a party who wishes to file further particulars in court, and in this case file interrogatories, may file at any time but not later than 10 days after filing the reply to the respondent's response. If he fails to apply within the period laid down, he shall be barred from so applying. Mr. Samani said while referencing the electoral law, the court rule. In the unanimous ruling of the five-member panel, the court said, the petitioners, Mr. O.B. and L.P., filed their reply to the respondent, Mr. Tinubu, INEC and APC's reply to the petition on 21st April 2023. Mr. Tsamani noted that Mr. Obi's request seeking leave to serve the interrogatories on INEC was filed on 23rd May 2023. Therefore, it was filed out of the statutory time as stated in the first schedule of the Electoral Act 2022, Mr. Tsamani said. He said the law unequivocally prohibits party from making an application for further particulars after the period laid down has elapsed. The court further emphasized that the time for filing any court document in an election petition is sacrosanct. The court cannot extend the time to file the interrogatories. The petitioner's counsel did not ask for an extension of time but rather seek to employ the right to fair hearing as the magic wand to escape the consequences of their failure to comply with the law and blame the court for their action, Mr. Tsamani explained. In dismissing the request, the court said the application is incompetent and the court lacks the jurisdiction to entertain it. Accordingly, it is struck out. At the application hearing on Thursday, Mr. Obi's lawyer, Patrick Ikweto, a senior advocate of Nigeria's son, sought to know the quality of the ICT experts and professionals who presided over the 25 February presidential poll. Mr. Equeto had urged the court to order INEC to supply him with the names and other details of its ICT professionals that deployed electronic devices for the election. He raised 12 questions to be forwarded to INEC. Mr. Equeto had hoped that if the court granted their request, it would enable them to ask relevant questions and elicit responses that would aid their suits. The inability of the electoral umpire to electronically transmit results of the presidential election from polling units in real time to its IREF portal is a major contention at the courts. 
But our next lawyer, Temi Pinheiro, a son opposed Mr. Obi's application to subject electoral officials to interrogation. Mr. Pinheiro argued that the requests were incompetent. He contended that Mr. Obi's request should have come during the court's pre-hearing session. The court had held its pre-hearing sessions for two weeks when it streamlined the procedures for the trial of the substantive petition. Mr. Pinheiro contended that the court lacked the jurisdiction to grant Mr. Obi's applications. Mr. Tinubu's lawyer, Akin Olujimi, and his APC counterpart, Latif Agbemi, both sons, aligned with INEC in opposing Mr. Obi's request. The lawyers argued that the application was incompetent and urged the court to discountenounce it. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and please turn the notification bell on. Thank you. Meanwhile, the Presidential Election Petition Court, PEPC, admitted two video flash drives in the evidence brought by Mr. Peter Obi through a subpoenaed witness to prove his petition against President Bola Tinubu. Obi and his Labour Party LP are petitioners in the petition marked CA PE PC 032023, challenging the election which brought President Bola Tinubu into power. Respondents are the Independent National Electoral Commission Hynek, President Bola Tinubu, Vice President Kashim Shetima, and the Hall Progressives Congress APC. The court admitted two video flash drives tendered through a subpoenaed witness for OB and his party. At the resumed hearing of the petition, Levi Uzukwo, son, counsel for the petitioners, told the court the proceeding would be conducted by Jubrin Okitekpa, son. He said the proceeding would also require software engineering. A subpoenaed witness from Channels TV was called, named Loki, or Bowo Isawode, a reporter and editor. The council informed the court that two subpoenas dated May 30 and June 6 were served on the TV station to produce the video clips. The video clips, he said, are an interview with the chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. The second one is that of Mr. Festus Okoye, National Commissioner and Chairman of the Information and Voter Education Committee of INEC. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.